Good morning, everybody, for those of you joining live. And for those of you who are watching the replay, my, my name is Helen with Transformational Goddess Retreats. On this uh, new moon in Leo and the Lion's Gate portal, a very, very powerful time, not only with the new moon, but with this Lion Gate portal. So anything that we dream and manifest on this new moon will be highly illuminated. So what a great invitation for us all to dream and get clearer on what we really want. We're halfway through the year, so it is, um, it gives us all hope that we can steer the ship, we can change. If we can't change what is around us, we can change what is within us, what is, what is bubbling, what is, what have you been dreaming, what are you wanting to change? And um, I always mention this in our um, initiation with the new moon, that we think of the new moon and the cycles that as women we innately have within our bodies, our natural cycles, are highly tuned to the cycles of the moon. But in our uh, male-dominated world, there's always this this push and charge to keep going in spite of our energy or in spite of what we innately feel is a time to rest and recharge and reset. So the new moon is an invitation for us to sit in the quiet under the dark moon and replenish our energy stores so that we can fully shine at the full moon and then we can gather again each cycle under the new moon and we can also equate the new moon to winter a time and spring or a time of darkness and a time of springtime when new seeds are planted So I like to start with a poem, as always, a new moon poem. A new moon teaches us gradualness and deliberation and how one gives birth to oneself slowly. Patience with small details makes perfect a large work like the universe. That's by Rumi. So this new moon in Leo is a real bountiful time of creative energy. So if you're thinking of starting a new project so you're in the middle of one, this is such a creative time. And it's, it's so powerful with the Lion's Gate portal. It can supercharge our ideas. And this is a time to really get clear what you authentically want, especially as we're halfway through the year. And it's also a time to look at our relationships, intimate or friend relationships, family relationships, and our authentic selves our truth and our light. And Leo is a fire sign. So it sparks our individuality, our charisma, our prowess like the lion. And qualities of Leo are loyalty, sovereignty, and generosity 
any Leos here today or Leo risings? No? You maybe have a friend who's a Leo. Yes, we all know we've got those Leo friends that are very generous. So what to wish for in this new moon is love and romance, creativity, generosity, celebration, play, fun, dignity. But the shadow side of Leo is arrogance, self-centeredness, and extravagance. And Leo can really bring courage to our veins. And we can take a deeper look at what we want, what we want to do in our life at this time. And this new moon in Leo is also guiding us to focus on the goals ahead, taking one step at a time so that we can accomplish anything. I'm guilty of, of not always, I've got tons of projects, I want to do them all and I don't focus enough so that I don't finish one. But Leo is asking us to focus on one thing so we can accomplish it. Um, Leo rules personal heart connections, romance, or children, dating, intense love encounters, and giving and receiving of love and affection. Leo also rules enthusiasm, creative projects, artistic expression, giving love, loyalty, generosity, bringing joy, encouragement, and kindness, dignity, recognition, being center stage, self-confidence, powerful individual expression and giving others center stage through encouragement. Determination, leadership, concentrated focus, follow-throughs, strength of purpose. And also the shadow side, arrogance, pride, being overly dramatic. Oh, she says, putting her hand on her forehead, collapsing in a heap. Self-centeredness, extravagance, domineering. So during our guided meditation, we're going to focus on releasing self-doubt so that you feel confident and happy within yourself with a sense of courage and pride. And finding your sense of purpose so you feel determined, focused, and you follow through on your projects to completion. And finally, <clears throat> embracing heart connections. So you give generously and receive abundant love in all your relationships. Sounds wonderful, doesn't it? Thinking of the lion, the courage and the pride and the generosity <clears throat> so I'm going to light the, my candle I'll light my candle for you if you don't have one or if you have one you can light a candle now so that we can start our meditation
did for our meditation, um, I drew a, um, a group intention card, which I will read during this the meditation. So this is an invitation for you to get comfortable if you're lying down or sitting and to grab your journal for afterwards when um, we do our conscious free writing. And it's right, <clears throat> we do that right after the meditation where you have let go of everything. You're not in your mind, you're in your heart. And it's um, the magical time when everything pours out of you. <clears throat> And during the, the new moon um, is the, the ideal time to set your intentions. And the new moon, where um, it went new at, I think it was 6.40 a.m. Pacific time. 6.49, excuse me. I was a couple of minutes out there. And I woke up at 6.30 this morning, my time. And I was so excited to be right, to be awake right in that time. But anything within eight hours of the new moon is the magical time. So even if you don't get to your intentions right now, you know, after our time together, you could spend some time during the day. So if everybody's comfortable, I know it's breakfast time for some of us, but this would be a good invitation to so you settle in and um, get yourself comfortable. And feel the support of your back, whether you're lying down or sitting. Know that it is supported. And your feet are firmly grounded or your sit bones are firmly planted on Mother Earth. Mother Earth that, that reminds us of the cyclical nature of everything and the element, the elements that are tied to the new moons. And as women, we honor this time, this cycle time, an invitation to start over, start anew, plant new seeds for the month ahead, and get in tune with our deepest desires and callings. And maybe to look back to at the seeds we planted last month, maybe they need some more nurturing and also to let go of things that aren't working. So if you just observe your breath, noticing the rise and fall of your chest or your belly as you inhale and exhale. And as we envision the flame of this fire sign, igniting the single flame of a candle or the solar rail, ray of the sun. Honoring that this flame ignites our passion. It gives us warmth from a fire, a place to gather, 
with others in community. Our ancestors used fires to ward off animals. Our ancestors would dance and honor the element of fire in that it's transformative, it's destructive, and it's healing. We can burn away the things that no longer serve us All the things we have worked through, we can vanquish them into the flames. But let's imagine we're sitting in our virtual circle, which we are, in front of a bonfire. You can feel the warmth on your hands and face. See the flames flickering, the crack of the wood And we can give thanks to the element of fire. We can give thanks for the transformation of eliminating the negative, but also the positive in igniting a spark within us. A spark that will ignite new ideas, bring light. Spark new ideas of creativity. Remind us to be courageous. Ignite our passion in our relationships, our passion for ourselves, passion for projects. And uh, even though we, we remind ourselves that the root chakra at the base of our spine is, is the new moon chakra, we're also focusing on the solar plexus, the second chakra, how we show up in the world for this Leo new moon. How others view us, our confidence, how we wanna show up in the world, how we wanna show up in our relationships, how we show up for our clients or our students. Are we proud and courageous and strong generous? Are we generous with our information, our transmissions? Are we generous in our relationships? Are we giving praise and courage to others around us? In so doing, we get it back. The law of giving and receiving we hold back on praise for others what are we saying to ourselves that we don't want it ourselves are we open to receive that praise it's twofold So think of a time 
when you felt confident and unhappy, happy within yourself, when you were courageous. Let's think at that time. What do you look like? How are you feeling? Where are you? Are you leading a workshop? Presenting to a client? Are you in relationship feeling confident? Think of a time when you were so focused and determined and achieved something. What was it? What did you do to get there? Or not do? And finally, think of a time when you have or had a strong heart connection with a friend or a partner. Where you truly felt open and generous with your heart connection. What feelings? came up or come up around that strong connection. Keeping your eyes closed, I'm going to read our group intention. The light in me sees the light in others and connects with them there, raising the frequency of the planet towards universal healing. As the light in me heals and emerges, it naturally seeks and exalts the light in all who surround me. The process is my service to the planet. The light in me sees the light in others and connects with them there, raising the frequency of the planet towards universal healing. As the light in me heals and emerges, it naturally seeks and exalts the light in all who surround me. This process is my service to the planet. And if 
if you're called to take a few deep breaths before we come back into our space slowly. So when you're ready to come back, we we'll slowly re-emerge, maybe keeping a soft gaze. And coming back if you're being lying down. And this is the magical time where you grab your journals and I'm going to ask you some questions. I'm going to journal with you too. So the first question How can I see the world afresh with the eyes of a child? I'll repeat it. How can I see the world afresh with the eyes of a child? There's two parts to this. And how can I get involved with activities that evoke my passion and vital interest? I'm also going to put these in the chat. I'll repeat. How can I see the world afresh with the eyes of a child? And how can I get involved with activities that evoke my passion and vital interest? And for those of you who are new to this um, unconscious writing, it's just allowing whatever comes out, no editing, just let the pen flow. There's no right or wrong, just whatever comes up.
Oftentimes when we're starting new projects, we have to release old belief patterns. Especially when doubt comes up. So what's the worst that could happen that you make a mistake or so what, right? And with that, looking at the world in the eyes of a child, trusting and allowing yourself to be play playful, letting go of control. We're asking questions like a child. a couple of minutes to wrap up that question before we move on to the next question. Okay, moving on to the next question. How can I create a feeling of romance and play in my relationship? Or if you're re-entering the dating scene, what do I need to ignite in myself to ensure the experience is successful and pleasurable for me? that's in the chat. <clears throat> How can I create a feeling of romance and play in my relationship? Or if you're re-entering the dating scene, what do I need to ignite within myself to ensure the experience is successful and pleasurable? For me.
couple more minutes on this question before we go on to the last question. The last question, what is one thing a day I could do that brings me pleasure? Or how can I create more play in my life? Or how can I be more generous in my relationships? I had the experience of generosity with a friend yesterday where she showered me with confidence and that meant so much. So maybe you've been observing a friend and you've been meaning to compliment them. Or maybe something that they've achieved or how they show up in the world. Something that you've been admiring. Maybe you haven't had time to tell them. been allowing enough play in your life with everything going on in the world we can still be creative and playful
what brings you pleasure. I was thinking my coffee after I meditate. It's a reward. Sitting in the early morning light and nobody else is around. Or dancing, drumming, singing, writing. just being, sitting. What brings you pleasure? sipping tea. Heart connections. being here right now in, in the new moon. I know this gives me pleasure being of service and creating this sacred space for us all to drop into. And for those who watch the replay, holding our face up to the sunlight, basking in the solar rays, as women we live by the sun and love by the moon. The moon that is constantly evolving, waxing and waning, illuminating and dying, the cycle of life, rebirth, birthing. Of course we're always changing throughout the month, whereas the sun is steady and strong, the masculine energy. But as women, we're constantly evolving and changing. There's no denying it, right? <laughs> and it's allowing ourselves to be okay with the times where we're quiet and still. And when we wanna shine during the full moon. So a couple of minutes to wrap up that last question if you're still writing. And if not, you can just close your eyes and let everything ruminate and knowing that you can return revisit these questions on the recording.
and write some more so that you can set your intentions for the month ahead. So based on the questions that I asked, you could create your intentions around the creating romance or pleasure in your life. An intention could be something I begin my day igniting my passion. Or I begin my day in silence for 10 minutes to allow my passion to be ignited. And in writing your intentions as if they are, have already happened. one bonus question if you want to write this down seeing as Leo is so generous what are the right actions in work or with family or friends do I need to take that will cause me to be recognized in a positive way. What are the right actions in work or with family and friends do I need to take that will cause me to be recognized in a positive way? I put those that in the chat. <clears throat> do I need to show up? Do I need to be consistent? Lots to think about. ask yourself, how do you want to be recognized in a positive way? Just a minute to wrap up that last question. I'm going to read the, <clears throat> the Rumi poem that I read in the beginning again. If you missed it. The new moon teaches gradualness and deliberation and how one gives birth to oneself slowly Patience with small details makes perfect a large work like the universe. So 
So as we're coming to a close, I want to thank you for joining me and joining the others in this sacred pause under the new moon in Leo and taking the qualities of the sign and the um, lion's gate portal to illuminate your deepest desires and to manifest your dreams and set intentions under this beautiful new moon in Leo. And we have the second full moon in Aquarius on the 22nd. The second full moon in Aquarius. And we will meet again in September. Sounds like a long way away. Um, for the Virgo new moon. I'm going to make that on a Sunday again. It's actually on the Monday, but I'm going to make it create our ceremony on the Sunday, the 5th, at the same time, 9 a.m. And we will explore Virgo, the Earth sign. So I'll be in touch during the month as we, as the moon moves through the cycles with invitations on um, just to tend your seeds and then at the full moon as well um, to, in letting go. So until next month, thank you again so much for being here and joining me and have a beautiful day and don't forget to drink plenty of water and um, move this energy through your body for walking or dancing and <laughs> thank you for your thank yous and um, to honor where you are and where you want to be in the world and how you want to show up like the proud lioness that you are and I'll leave you with a roar